I don't know. One time I saw the Earth in this kind of in the center of the like the spiritual plane of the universe. In reality, like in the physical plane of the universe, we're spinning around the Earth, right? But in the spiritual plane, all the dimensions to me, I saw kind of funnel and like intersect at the Earth, right? Yeah. And that's why the Earth is this religious, never-ending conflict between good and evil. All the dimensions are kind of just jacking in the codes of every way of life and and every possible philosophy and every equation of good and evil. And it's sort of this test of consciousness that God is omnipresent around running to figure out what like, to figure out what created him. But it just seems to be a test of consciousness, and this seems to be the will or the universe wants constant improvement and competition. And, all the dimensions seem to run through Earth. I don't know. We're here to kind of just test out which ones work. Does that make any sense? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We we talked about this once. It was the um, the way I see it. Mm-hmm. What we're seeing here is like, as I said before, there's an infinitude of possible God's assigned frameworks, mm-hmm. and um. There's an infinitude of possible frameworks. So, yeah, it's what we do is what we, we, we figure out, like it's, I'm not sure it's like this is the purpose of our existence, but it's our purpose. It is what, it's just what we do. Is, is we, you know, we, um, we go through all the frameworks and we see, and we figure out the best frameworks. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what what's another is. word for a framework? Figure out the best philosophy. Narratives. 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 Yeah. That's our purpose? Yeah. Well, that's what's the meaning of life. It's probably that. We're just... The same meta-narrative. Is what I say the meaning of life is fairly religious and that our purpose is to sort of... To find a, yeah. a narrative in the universe. You know. Right? Sure. Makes sense. Spaceships going out in the galaxies. Oh yeah, the order thing, remember how I said like, okay, so you're in the jungle, it's like tigers, monkeys, it's chaos, but if you look out, there's a canopy and there's sort of order there. Yeah. Think about a galaxy, you fly out, there's stars and meteorites, you're in chaos, but you zoom out, it, this, the Milky Way is this beautiful, amazing, yeah. fractal, or yeah, right. this is what we a collection of freaking amazing in all directions, up, down, left, and right, not just kind of left and right, like we see things on Earth because we have a gravitational pull. Yep omnipresent thing and then you but then you get outside of that and you're in the abyss of the universe and then you zoom out and it's the universe and the yeah. multiverse well it's the uh, it seems to be this infinite cycle yeah so like I said this is the second interpretation of that is that and then I really got to finish this is like is really you know is chaos just order that's not understood might be, yeah. So like, because you go into the chaos, get one elixir of it, yeah. But you could turn the whole thing into an understood thing. And this actually goes back to uh, the Saturn metaphor. Because we just compared the chaos to what was outside of Young's candle, but Young's candle represents what is known, and the black stuff represents what's not. Known. Yeah. So like, by this meter, we can really we could say chaos is in and of itself that which. The, our candle does not reach. And then eventually the flame grows brighter. Yeah. It seems infinite. It also reminds me of the Saturn metaphor where you have Saturn, the center is, you know, finite, the, the lead ball in the center that is the gravitational pull, right? Or any planet, right? Yeah. And then as you go out, you get to waters and looser grounds and then the atmosphere and then eventually Saturn's ring, right? Right. And then the the center of Saturn is finite idea, and then it moves out and it gets more and more um, undefined until you reach the rings, and that's where the artists live, right? And then elixirs in the form of meteorites from the space, which is darkness, which is chaos, add to Saturn, right? Yeah. You know this metaphor. I know this metaphor. And that cre- it sounds to them like you're a schizophrenic. But How, you am I describing this poorly? I think so. <laughs> you know, you just keep saying, you just randomly threw out medi- elixirs in the form of meteorites. <laughs> so, so yeah, probably you do sound like All a right. schizophrenic. So, okay. 
All right, so space is chaos, right? Saturn is order, and order slowly gets looser, like yep. a drop of water slowly loses its form. Yep. Um, but the chaos elixirs come in from the chaos, which is meteors. They crash into Saturn, which creates more weight, thus leave more gravitational pull. The rings slowly pull in, and, it's, and then it's just this infinite thing where Saturn grows and becomes Jupiter, and then there's more rings and more moons surrounding it. It's just like, it's like yeah. Jupiter, there's a moon of consciousness kind of hanging off of it, and you can sort of tap into, like, dude, it's, everything's it's a, it's a reflection a of consciousness. Think about it, we'll be living on the moon soon, right? Yeah. So think about that. That's, that's like for our, if in our brain we made the next logical jump to a new concept. Okay. And we start living in this new concept. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this, uh, this, I really think this Saturn metaphor really is good. Yeah. Even if it's not totally crystallized. Yeah. But, um, you know, I guess one of the things I like most is the rings. Because mm-hmm. the rings are like solid, this bit of, this island of kind of solidness outside. Outside, yeah. So exactly. they're like, because they have their own form of crystallization in the art world. Mm-hmm. It's just not logical. Yeah, there's like a little, a little, a little, this second There's level. like a little, like, there's a there's a little gap, and that's why some people like think art's a joke and stuff. Yeah, I like the Saturn metaphor. It's a good one. Um, oh yeah, dude, I figured out what Jesus' the crown of thorns. What do you think the cr- Jesus wears a crown of thorn? What do you think that means? I figured it out. I think it's like a. Uh... It's like, you know, he's crowned in that he's the leader, you know, uh, of the movement. He's the, he, he's the, um, holy one, mm-hmm. but the, uh, the crown isn't, isn't a blessing. It's not a gold. It's a, it's a terrible pain, sacrifice. That's good. That's true. I thought of it as he has a tormented consciousness. It's on his head, conscious, and it's mm-hmm. tormented. And that it's his duty to sort of be in this this war of consciousness to sacrifice his life for us. Mm-hmm. Right? It's probably it's Could both. Be. It's probably a million things. Okay. It is a million things. It's mine. Hmm? I think it's mine. You think it's mine too? No. No. I said mine. You think it's mine too? Oh, and I guess it's probably yours too. It's just a crown. It's hard to miss that fact. You know what I mean? It's not called a laurel. It's called a crown. All right. What did we touch first? The bottom of the ocean or space? What did we touch first? Yeah. Space. We yeah. got to space first. Yeah. Okay. Let's say the oceans, the bottom of the oceans, right? Mm-hmm. We're here, land, ocean. Space. Yeah. Earth, hell, hell. Let's right. say it's that. Let's say the bottom of the ocean, the deep of our subconscious, hell. Let's say space is heavens, right? Okay. The ocean, the devil is an illusionist, right? Right? Right. The ocean appears to be infinite. It is virtually infinite. Right? Space actually is infinite. Okay. The devil's an illusionist, right? Space actually is infinite. We touched heaven first. We went to the moon first. We touched heaven first, right? Right. But because the ocean is actually more shallow than space is, yeah. we will more than likely reach the depths of hell before we reach the, the heaven. Well, you know, well, we touched heaven first. The reason I'm not sure about that is because we had boats before we had planes. <laughs> sure, but we never were underwater. No, no, I guess not. Um, actually, actually, that's a way. Hold up right? a second. The really boats were invented in the in the uh, nineteen. Yeah, but we literally 1890s. they went like like a hundred feet under. I don't know. I, I I I would struggle to figure out what else the parallels were like. Breaking I'd say touching the moon seems to be really 
touching the atmosphere. Yeah, but breaking the atmosphere. I, I generally would have to view breaking the atmosphere as being parallel to like. <laughs> And, and this is a shaky metaphor, really. Yeah, I know. But it just seems to me that the Earth and then the universe seems to really be a reflection of our conscious and uh, unconscious. Well, that's probably true, but it's just... Um, it, Which, we, does that go not, back to episode we're one? We're not going understand right. all the nature, all of nature. Yeah, and I know, but it's fun to figure it out. Yeah. But does that go back to uh, episode one where I said we seem to see... We uh, tend to see the universe as too much a reflection of ourselves, and it probably isn't. It might. It's well, definitely interesting. It, it definitely goes back. I would say it goes back to that because th- there is this room for fallacy where if you see the universe from from this stance, mm-hmm. from this meaning based stance rather than actuality based stance, you can kind of run into the same fault that the classical world did. Which or, or, or even like, you can go even worse, then you can run into the same fault that like. You know the the Indians did, mm-hmm. where it's yeah, like Indians. Indians or Native Americans. I- Indians, which is what empiricism, but not just empiricism. You know, like the whole like this discarding of deduction mm-hmm. for this sort of like romantic induction, mm-hmm. like this. I don't need to understand the outside world because if I if I, I can understand, understand the outside world well, better by trying to understand the, the soul, which is something the, the Indians did that a lot, and the yeah. Greeks kind of did that too. Yeah, and I'd say the, the like Chinese monks and stuff. Yeah, well, actually, I would say the, the Greeks and the uh, Indians were both more about that. Okay. Well, uh, maybe the Chinese were on par with the Greeks, but yeah. Um, but the problem is, it just it doesn't work well for societies because mm. they just they get not fixed and static. So you have to explore and go out. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, no, I actually am using this as a parallel that makes me want to actually go out and explore. Because before that, I would just be like, oh, I'd rather just sit at home and think real hard. Mm. Um, but now it's like, all right, I, I want to go to space. I want to figure this out. Yeah. And that, that was, and th- that converse, there's a, I guess you could say there's a converse to that, which is, which is the relief the West held in, in this millennium. Yeah, because the West was like sailing and freaking... Well, the, the the belief the West developed during really during the Middle Ages, mm-hmm. uh, the High Middle Ages, you know, that period where the West kind of was starting to get better after a while, because the early Middle Ages were the Dark Ages, you know, but then the High Middle Ages were a bit better. Mm-hmm. Um, the West was really starting to go like... They decided that a sort of converse thing were the best way to understand God was by understanding nature and that's kind of what you're saying now it's like that's the converse of it the best way to and that was what the west that that was a big part in like the last you know millennium of, of western advancement was this belief if they understand nature we're going to do yeah is that what science came out of in a sense yeah so when did that stop when did we start like because to me i was like why is science conflicting with god to me i was like oh you guys are just mapping out the equations wrote wrote by god the guy was like, we're yeah. just starting to crystallize and understand God's plan. Like, we're like, literally have like one hair of the fucking, you know, thousand dollar yeah. coat he has. And that was the belief. When God is progress doctrine. Yeah. And that was kept up to the end of the 19th century. I wrote Led Zeppelin is in cage me. is like full Nazi music. Well, yeah, it's, it's German. Yeah, that's like full Nazi. I, 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 got, I, talking about the, 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 the songs about the, the Clockwork Elves. The lyrics are literally. Germans are slightly into that. Wait, uh, I actually heard someone compare this to like the shadow of the German. Of the German, Bro, the German philosophy, the German, German culture. It's like, is it? and there's a yeah. shadow off of just full demon. Yeah, and that was a great comparison that was made. That that it was the shadow of the German culture. What is the shadow of the German culture? The the weird like Nazi stuff. Yeah, it is because like they're super hardcore, like super industrious, intellectual, science, yeah. 
and then like the shadow off of them, the tail, uh, and then of a comet. Think about a comet, right? There's a tail that comes off of it. It's a great image. And the I shadows still love the Young's image, though. All right, I like the comet one because it's cool. But off in the end, there's just clockwork elves. I said that works, actually. Yeah, there's clockwork elves, and there's demons, and they're just like... Yeah. It's crazy. Don't know, no. But, um... Don't know, no. Don't know, no. 